Now, you might think that reducing congestion is easy. In the case of cars, you just build more roads. Or in the case of the internet, you just add more bandwidth, for example, more optical fibres connecting cities. But it's not always so simple. And I'm now going to show you something very surprising. Here's an example that looks at the flow of cars along roads between four cities. Cars are going to try to get from City A across to City D. Now, this green road is quite a long road. It takes six minutes to travel from A to C, and likewise from B to D. The red road is much shorter, but it's quite narrow. The red road becomes congested. So the time it takes to travel along one of the red roads is equal to the number of cars that are using that road. And then finally, we have this yellow road, which is a very fast road. It only takes a minute to travel along the yellow road. OK, let's see what happens if four cars try to get from A across to D. Let's see which route they take. Well, the first car wants to go from A to B along this road. That just takes one minute. Up the yellow road, which takes a minute. And along the second red road, that takes a minute. So that's three minutes in total. What about the next car? Well, the next car wants to follow the same route, but now, of course, this takes two minutes for each of those cars because that road is congested. A minute up here and another two minutes along there. And likewise with the third and fourth cars. They also prefer to take this same route. So here they are, going along the red road, across the yellow road, and along the second red road. So how long is this taking the drivers? Well, it takes four minutes now to go along a red road because there are four cars. Remember, this road is congested. It always takes a minute to go along the yellow road and another four minutes along this re red road. So that's four plus one plus four is nine minutes. Now, would any of those drivers like to switch and take a different route? Well, let's have a look. Well, one possibility is to go along here and then this way. That would take six minutes plus another four minutes, which is ten minutes. So that's longer, so the drivers don't want to do that. The only other route that a driver could take would be to go up the green road, down the yellow road, along the other green road, and that would be six plus one plus six, which is thirteen minutes, which is even longer. So none of the drivers um, want to go any different route. Now, this yellow road is a very fast road, so obviously it must be helping with the traffic flow. Or is it? I'm now going to show you a very strange effect is called Bray's Paradox. And to help understand it, I have a physical model of Bray's Paradox here. So what we have is a weight that's suspended from some coloured strings from the ceiling. And these are just like the roads. So this red string is an elastic string. That's like the red congested road. And this green string is, is uh, not elastic. That's like one of the green roads. And then here we have a very short piece of yellow string that corresponds to the yellow road and then the second red and green roads are up there at the top. Now you'll notice that these green strings are not under any tension, they're completely slack. And at the bottom there we also have a scale which is telling us how many minutes it takes to travel between those two cities. So at the, minute, it's, at the moment it says uh, nine minutes. Okay, let's see what would happen if we remove that yellow road. So I have a pair of scissors, and what do you think is going to happen when I cut this yellow cord, which is holding up the weight? Any ideas? What's going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? You think it'll go down more? OK, let's cut the yellow string and see what happens. OK, well, very surprisingly, the weight's actually moved up, which means that this journey time has reduced down to about eight minutes. So that suggests, going back to our roads, that if we remove the yellow road, it might actually improve the traffic flow. Well, let's have a look and see what happens if we remove that yellow road. So let's take these cars off and let's work out which way they're going to go. So now there are only two routes to get from A to D. So the first car, it doesn't matter which way they go, let's just assume they go along the top here. The second car wants to avoid congestion on this road. So the second car is going to take the bottom route along there and then along there. The third car, again, it's both the same. They could go either way. Let's assume they go along the top there and along that red road. And the fourth car, again, wants to avoid congestion on this road, so they'll take the bottom route. So they go along there and then along there. 
Now let's have a look at how long it takes these drivers to get from A to D. Well, they each take six minutes plus two minutes, which is eight minutes. So that's less time than it took when the yellow road was present. This is a very strange effect, and it arises because these drivers are acting selfishly. They ignore any benefit which their decisions might have for other drivers. And this strange effect can actually happen in real life. In Seoul, in Korea, when they closed one of the three tunnels through the city, they actually found that the traffic flow improved. Now, on the internet, the packets of data are like the cars, and the connections between the computers are like the roads.